Good afternoon, everybody. As always, my name is JC, and it's Saturday, so that must mean it's time for another Warcraft video. Today, we're going to be going over strategies for leveling in the Shadowlands pre-patch. So with that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is cover all the basics because so much has changed, and let's start with heirlooms. As you may know, with the arrival of the pre-patch, heirloom pieces have now lost their bonus experience modifier. This has led some to put forth the idea that heirlooms are no longer relevant. This is simply not accurate. With the level squish and the resulting new leveling system, yes, any gear you receive through quests will be level appropriate. However, unlike heirloom gear, that quest gear will not continue to scale with your character. More importantly, the rate at which you receive replacement pieces for each individual slot has not changed and may be based on content that is now more than a decade old. With the speed at which characters now level, your equipment and weapons is going to be consistently 5 to 10 levels below that of your character and your opposition, with the corresponding reduction in DPS output. This output reduction is going to be most pronounced for dual wielding builds and casters. So if you want to be leveling at anything close to maximum efficiency, heirloom gear is still the way to go. In fact, I would say heirloom weapons are now more important than they've ever been. Alright, moving on to bonus experience potions. Draft of 10 lands is now the only purchasable bonus XP potion in the game. The potion is account bound and sold from your faction's BFA Service Medallion Quartermaster. Five medallions per potion, honor bound for Horde, seventh legion for the Alliance. The potions give a 10% bonus and last for an hour and do persist through death. Don't forget these are account bound, so check your alts to see if you have any medallions laying around. You'll probably need six to 10 potions for your entire leveling process. If you don't have enough service medallions laying around, a neat trick is to run the heroic version of either Warfront. At current gear levels, these things take, what, about 20 minutes to complete? And by running it on heroic, you can double dip both the regular and heroic quest line and double your rewards. This means Stormguard will provide a total of 30 service medallions and Darkshore 65. Finally, before we get to new content, the last portion of our review section is War Mode. For those of you that don't know, War Mode can be turned on in the bottom right hand corner of your talent tree. Essentially, War Mode provides you with a bonus experience gain modifier in exchange for flagging yourself as available for open world PvP. The bonus for Alliance players is usually in the neighborhood of 25% and 10% for Horde. This is based on relative population sizes for each faction. War Mode can only be turned on in either Stormwind or Ogrimmar, but can be turned off in any resting XP area. Of course, you do run the risk of some ass clown with a small penis whose mother didn't love him compensating by griefing you or camping your corpse. However, it's easy enough to find a rested XP zone and simply turn War Mode off until the coast is clear. The bonus is absolutely worth it, particularly for Alliance players. So with that, let's move on to new content. Once you've created your character, new accounts are going to be forced into Exile's Reach. Veteran players are going to have the choice between Exile's Reach and the typical racial starting zones. Exile's Reach is designed to teach new players game mechanics and class abilities. It does meander a bit when discharging those responsibilities, so if you are looking for pure leveling efficiency, you are always better selecting your racial newbie area. On the other hand, if you are looking for new content, Exile's Reach does have a small storyline and a few cutscenes. Be advised, though, that the story elements on Exile Island have little to no relevance to the greater Warcraft lore in general and are essentially a one-off. So, you've went through your starter zone and you are now level 10. New players are automatically going to be funneled into Battle for Azeroth. Veteran players are going to be allowed to choose any expansion they prefer to continue the leveling process. Before you choose, there have been significant changes to mounts that you need to be aware of before you make a decision. First, flight restrictions have been removed from all content prior to BFA. This means that if you took some time off and missed an expansion, but you really wanted to go back and experience that content, you will be able to fly once your character reaches level 30, regardless of whether or not you have unlocked the Pathfinder achievement. Speaking of mounts and levels, those have been reformed as well. Starting at level 10, you can train Apprentice Riding to unlock your first ground mount. Every 10 levels thereafter, you will find a new trainable riding skill. So, Apprentice at level 10, Journeyman at 20, 
expert at level 30, which is your first flight, and finally master at level 40. Now that the mount issue is behind us, the question remains, which expansion should you choose to level through? In terms of most efficient leveling, there are currently two camps, those that side with Warlords of Draenor and those that pick Cataclysm. In order to reconnect with old arena partners returning for Shadowlands, I have recently leveled two Horde characters, one through each expansion. For my money, I found Warlords to be the more efficient route, so there you have my two cents. I haven't done either Alliance side since the leveling changes went live. Finally, just a few tips before we go. Here you see my level 30-something Alliance Priest. On the left-hand side, he's finishing a quest. On the right-hand side, he's finishing a pet battle. Notice the experience gain is very similar. If you like pet battles, this can be a quick and massive source of supplemental experience that has great synergy with the questing that you were already doing in the area. And on a final side note, dungeon grinding is just not competitive from a leveling efficiency standpoint, so keep that in mind when you make your decisions. Before I leave, I'd like to offer one last thought. I've talked a lot about efficiency today, but a month from now, six months from now, are you really going to care about the hour or two that you saved leveling that character? Or are you going to look back and regret not exploring new content, possibly unlocking unseen cinematics, or acquiring unique transmogs? Anyway, food for thought, the decision is yours, and I will see you next Saturday.